All right, so today we're shooting an aftermarket fiberglass hood. And uh, as I was prepping this thing out, I kept on blowing dust out of the inside of this hood. So we're gonna paint this one a little different than we normally do. I'm gonna show you the products that I use on the fiberglass hoods. That way you have your best holdout for longevity with this stuff because everyone knows that fiberglass likes to settle. It changes based on what it's made out of and how many matte layers it has and different products that are used in the making of it. So you wanna put something on these parts that'll hold out the best. And this is what I've used through the years that is the best product for it. All right, so this is the hood that we're gonna be shooting and you guys can see all this dust that's on the inside of this hood here. And I've already prepped the inside and I've been blowing it off now for about 20 minutes. And no matter what I do, I keep getting dust blowing out of the uh, crevices. So I made an executive decision that we're gonna go ahead and cut in the bottom of this hood. That way we can back mask it and keep the outside clean. And I'll show you why I wanna make sure that this thing comes out as clean as possible because it'll be very hard to uh, buff this one when it's done. So this here is the product that we're using on the outside of this hood. And this is the slick sand, the same stuff that I used on my cutlass to hold back the bodywork. Really good polyester primer and it has the resin. So once this stuff sets up, there's no shrinkage at all. And uh, it's a great product for restorations or any of this fiberglass stuff. So let me flip it back over and I'll show you guys the uh, top of it. All right, so this is the outside of the hood and it's got this indent here with this valley that runs all along inside and around both sides of this hood here like a hood scoop. So in order to get this thing the cleanest as possible because nobody wants to get dirt along this area here because it'd be very hard to polish it out and make sure that it looks nice. So the last thing that I want to do is get dirt blowing from the bottom of this thing with all that dust and stuff from this uh, hood when it was made that's trapped underneath. So what we're gonna do here is, we're gonna go ahead and cut in the bottom quick and uh, flip it back over, block it out. We'll bring in the fender and the hood and we're gonna try to get a beautiful outcome on this one here. That way we don't have any chance of burning this edge or even have areas that aren't buffed fully because of the way that this hood here is made. So you guys know that I like to paint everything apart and do it one time, but sometimes you have to use your head to get the best outcome of each job. And with all the usual collision jobs that I do, I do everything one time, and uh, that's the best, fastest way to do it. But sometimes when you're doing these custom jobs, you gotta think about what's the best outcome for the job, because it may take a little bit more time for me to go ahead and cut this in and then flip it over and do the outside, but I'll save that much time of buffing and then having a problem with this hood. So. To get the best outcome of it, we're gonna go ahead, cut it in, back mask it to try to keep it clean. And we'll have our fingers crossed that we get a clean job when we do this one. So this here's the hood. I got a fender and then we're gonna go ahead and prep out the bumper for it and uh, see how nice we can get it to come out. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and block out and prep the outside of the hood before we cut in the inside. That way, once we lay it back over, we don't gouge it by moving it on the stand. So this here is a very good, strong primer, but you can prep it out with 320, and that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna block it with the 320, then we're gonna hit it with our 400, and we're gonna seal this one with our wet-on-wet -wet PPG sealer, and then move right into our base. So definitely top-of-the-line stuff for uh, holding back any kind of a repair on fiberglass. So let's get this thing prepped out. All right, we're gonna go ahead and hit it now with our black and we're gonna use the engine bay with the engine bay converter because under the hood on this is a satin. So I like to do this towards the end of the day after I got all my regular pay and work done. That way it doesn't affect my day. So I'll hit this, we'll come back in in the morning and we'll shoot the outside of the parts.
two hours later. All right, we got the rest of the parts in here now and ready. And we got our hood flipped back over and we're in our uh, sweet spot in the booth. I like to do my hoods in this location here, furthest away from the entry door. That way it's the cleanest spot. Because even though you have a booth with positive pressure, when you open that door and you move through it, if something's close to that door, you're gonna get more dirt in that spot. So this is where I do my hoods and uh, I get clean jobs over here in this section here. So you guys see that I sanded the hood before I brought it in here to cut it in and that'll save you time. That way when you unmask the bottom or if you're doing a different part of the job, you guys seen when I did the truck and painted the top on it, I already had it sanded, I masked it off and then I was able to leave the truck in the booth mask it the other way and be ready to roll with it so this here is uh different than i'm normally doing i haven't cut in a hood in probably years and years for the collision side of the business but sometimes you got to do things to get a better job and that's what we're willing to do because at the end of the day when the job is done that's how you know how good it came out so that's what we're willing to do here whatever it takes and uh this, the old saying is work smarter not harder but on this one we worked harder so that it was smarter because at the end this job is going to be a lot cleaner than flipping it back and forth and getting the dust out of the crack. So we got it loaded. Let's go ahead and let's do it. All right, so we got it sealed. And you guys seen when I went over the hood with the tack rag, after that, I went ahead and blew over the hood as if I was gonna be painting it without pulling the trigger. In case there was any loose lint anywhere, it would blow it off instead of going on there when I'm actually painting it. So that's one other trick that I do. And one other thing I didn't show you was make sure you tack off your hose and blow off yourself before you go over that hood because you're leaning over the hood and your hose is also leaning over the hood as well. So you could even tack your gun and your cup, but you got to think of all those things because you're leaning over the job and whatever's on you or your arm, your gun or your hose is going to be landing in that paint. So we did everything we could to try to get it clean. We got it sealed. Let's head into the base coat and then we'll clear it and see how it comes out.
All right, so we definitely got a clean job. And uh, I think being that we didn't have the chance of flipping it around and having all that dirt blow out of there, we took all the steps that we know, blow it off really good, clean it really good, tack it good, and uh, make sure you clean your hose, make sure you blow yourself off. And all those things that we did to uh, get a clean job worked out for us. So sometimes you gotta do it the hard way and not the smart way. But at the end, I think we really achieved what we were looking for, a clean job. And now we won't have much buffing, if not any buffing on this job. So really nice. And that's the car there that's going to be uh, having the hood on it and the fender and the bumper. So the bumper just needed to be cleaned up. It had a lot of rock chips in it. And then the fender was the same way. So we pulled it. That way we have no lines around any of the edges and everything is clean when it goes back together like it was never touched so that's the way we do it and uh it's the best way of doing it is that way you don't have any lines around anything when you do it when you paint stuff off the vehicle so that vehicle doesn't have to come in the booth there's no chance of overspray on it and uh it's just a nice clean job that way so hope you guys got something out of this one and uh check out that slick sand because it's key to uh having good holdout on a fiberglass part or any of the old school repairs on some of the restoration work. So we got one coming up. We're gonna be using a lot of that slick sand on and you guys will be seeing it soon. So see you on the next one.